Okay, so today I'm going to show you my car and what I'm working on at the moment is changing the DPF pressure differential sensor. Um, I've actually already changed it, but I'm going to show you the process of how to do it because it's pretty simple to do. Uh, far easier than most of the videos will show you. Um, so this is the E350 and Mercedes Estate or Touring and on a lot of these cars uh, you'll see that the the sensor is behind the airbox. Now what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to raise up the bonnet a little bit higher so I'll just pop, pop those um, restraints off and then we can lift the bonnet right the way up and the next thing to do is to pop off this engine cover. Now the engine cover here, what we just have is we have a couple of clips on the side and we just lift them up and then pull that out of the way and I just tuck it underneath and now we just lift this piece of plastic off the engine and put it to one side. Now, like I said, this is the 350, it's a right hand drive. And on a lot of cars, these have a big airbox in this area here, and it's a square airbox with the ECU on top of it. So that means you have to unplug the ECU cables before you can take the airbox out. Um, what we have on this one is we have the airboxes, one on each side, running down the side of the engine, and I've also got new air filters to fit today. Um, this old car deserves a bit of love and um, this is a 2010 model and it's got 170,000 miles on it or just over. Um, this works out as 275,000 kilometers for those who are metric. Now the thing I've got to change or the thing I have changed is this one here and this is the pressure differential sensor for the diesel particulate filter and the particulate filter is actually visible just there and what this does is it measures the pressure of the gases going into the particulate filter and then the pressure of the gases coming out and from that the machine knows whether it's blocked or not. Now what I've done is I've actually changed the pressure sensor already um, this pressure sensor came up as an engine management light and came up with the coat and it also went into limp mode which uh, was really annoying because it limited me to 70 miles an hour um, obviously on the motorway um, more importantly it did limit the the acceleration so it limited the amount I could use the accelerator and it limited the revs to two and a half thousand but pretty much I never go over two and a half thousand anyway or very rarely um, but I do use the the accelerator a lot more than I was allowed to in limp mode. Um, more to the point, rather than the inconvenience, it's also something that needed fixing. Now, what I'm going to do here is I've got a couple of new air filters, so I'm going to fit them at the same time. And as I do that, I had some problems refitting the initial clips that go on here, on the two hoses that go down to the actual uh, DPF. Uh, so I've got a couple of options to fix that. Um, one is little hose clamps and another is uh, cable ties. I'm probably actually just going to do it with the cable ties. Now this sensor here, this is a Bosch sensor. So I've got a replacement which is a Bosch unit. Um, you can see it there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link down below. I'll put a couple of links just to give you a choice if you want to click on it to buy. Um, I'll put a link for the OEM, the Mercedes one. Uh, which costs about £80. I'll link to this one, which is the Bosch replacement, and that costs about £30. And I'll also put a link to the cheapo, um, the alternative, the aftermarket one, and that's about £20. Now, I went for the middle of the range one um, because I happen to know that Mercedes use the Bosch one anyway, um, but this one is a, a Bosch branded rather than Mercedes branded, and there's a price difference of £50. Okay, I'll come back when I've got the airbox off. Now to get the airbox off, what we need to do 
is take out that screw there. And there's another one on the other side there, just down the bottom. Um, but I also need to loosen this bolt off here. And that bolt there actually fixes to the bottom box, as does that one there. Now, some of these are Torx, and they're Torx T25, I think, T25 or T30. And those ones are just 8mm sockets. Uh, once I've done that, I'm going to take off this air box so I've got better access to this over here. And I'm also going to change the air filters at the same time. And I need to do the same on the other side. Okay, so I've taken out the two screws. There's one from there and the one from there. I'm now going to loosen this one. In fact, I might take it out completely. Now, I've also taken off these two clips. And once you've taken the clips off, you can then pull this cover, which is in fact the air box, and that's the bit that's going to be replaced. I can pull that out. And I've got the two replacements over here. There's a left and a right. And I've positioned them just so that you can see the difference is the angle that this is at. So you've got to make sure you try and put the right one on the right side. So I'm going to do this, take them off one at a time, and change them. But whilst I've got this one off, I'm going to use that as an opportunity to get in here and sort out the pipes that come up to the pressure differential sensor. Okay, so here's the filter that came out. And you can see it's pretty much in need of replacing. In fact, from the look of that, I doubt very much if that was actually changed at the last service. Now we can actually see in behind. And these two clips were the ones that I had trouble refitting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this box out of the way. And to do that, I need to take this screw and that screw there. And then this just lifts out. I also just need to take off this uh, connecting air duct as well. And would you believe what I found in there? Well, I actually found the cap from an oil bottle and I found a leaflet. So I could possibly imagine that the leaflet was maybe sucked in, um, but the cap, there's no way on earth that got sucked in. That was obviously dropped down there during a previous service uh, and they didn't bother fishing it out, they just left it in. So, interesting, we'll see what's down the other side. Okay, so this just unclips from here and then can be wheeled and lifted out. And then what we're going to do is just wiggle and lift out that air box. Now it's got a couple of rubber clips that it just pops into. Um, so we just pull it and wiggle it out. Just when you do that, just be very careful not to bash anything else. Um, there's a lot of sensors and connectors around here. And a lot of them, the wiring can be quite sensitive. So just be careful not to bash stuff as you're dragging them out. Okay, so now we've got a lot better access to this. And what I'm going to do is just pop a couple of cable ties on there just to hold everything nice and firm. Uh, they do get pressured up, possibly up to uh, three bar, uh, which is not that much. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just push these, in fact I'll take these clips off, uh, because I can't get them to reseal. And then I will just cable tie everything in place so it doesn't move. Okay, so I've just fitted a couple of cable ties on here. And I've just put two on each hose. And I just found it easy just to take this, or loosen it off, so to undo the screw. It's a single screw at the top, that's a 10 mm uh, bolt rather than screw. And now what I'm going to do is bolt it back up, and then I'm going to use a single cable tie to secure it down the bottom, because the bracket that's supposed to hold it in place here is missing. Now the bracket doesn't do anything other than hold it in place, um, so I'm not fussed about the particular strength of it, so I'll just do that now. Okay, this is the air box that came off, and I'm just showing the bottom, which are these little feet clips, and they go into these rubber mountings down here. So when you put it back together, obviously you'll have to wobble them into place. Now what I have noticed is that I've got a bit of oil on here, and so I'm looking in the area where it came out of, and I can see that it looks like there's a tiny bit of an oil leak there. 
and what this looks like is it's coming from the rocker cover perhaps um, I'm not fussed about that for now um, but what it means is I will keep an eye on the uh, oil level a bit more than usual okay okay that's the base of the air box back in place I've got this one tightened up I haven't tightened this one yet uh, but it's a bit of play to put the actual air filter in now the air filter itself has a half a box on the top that's integral to the air filter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be careful not to get any of this crap inside this part of the air filter because that's the engine side now in there is a gasket and ideally I'd have a vacuum cleaner and suck that out um, I don't happen to have one here okay about to do the other side now what you have to be careful on the left hand side is that this one actually has a math sensor on it now again you don't need to unclip you can just unscrew direct directly from the unit and on the new body it has a place for the sensor to go into okay what I've done is I've taken off the mass airflow sensor math sensor and the reason I've done this before I actually take the box off is because I don't want it getting bashed around as I take the box off. So now I can undo the clip and then undo these, those first of all, and then these ones if I need to take out the airbox underneath to remove any other crap that may have got into it. Hopefully I just need to take off these one on the other side as well. Okay, that's what came out this side. Um, yeah, all this stuff could well have come in from outside. However, I'm pretty much 100% sure this didn't get changed at the last service. Now, that's a lot of miles of crap gone in there. Now, this box is empty though, so that's good news. So I don't have to actually remove that one to clear any crap out of it. Okay, so let's get the new filter in. Okay, there's one other thing to be aware of, and that is this area here where the MAF sensor goes into, there's a little plastic film over the bottom of the, the sensor uh, module. And what you need to do is puncture that first of all. Now ideally, the bottom of the MAF sensor should puncture it. Um, but if it doesn't, uh, obviously your MAF sensor is not going to work. Okay, so that's all back together. Got the two new air boxes in, which uh, hopefully make the engine breathe a bit easier. Um, give me a bit more economy bit less soot coming out the back which in turn should help the particulate filter and the pressure differential now I've done a, um, a test using an AB2 scanner um, the particulate filter has no um, zero soot content in it anyway so it's obviously just done a regen fairly recently um, what I'll do is I'll show you briefly the, uh, the scanner I've got and I'll put a link to that down in the description as well. So I've got two scanners. I've got one which is a cheapo one, which will tell you that there is a fault and let you clear the fault initially. Um, the other one is a much more uh, complex one, um, and it's actually wireless. It goes through Wi-Fi to my phone and gives you quite comprehensive readings and lets you actually do uh, not just diagnostics but service as well. So you can actually initiate a regen from this one, and it's probably the best value one on the market. Um, it's an Autel. Uh, so a good brand and it's about 50 quid like I said I'll put a link to that in the description down as well okay um, I will probably having seen the state of those air boxes and I'll probably have a look at everything else that should have been done on the last uh, service as well and just assume that none of it was done I know the oil change has been done I just did that last week um, so everything else I'll have a look at the brakes and everything else that should have been checked on the last service because I'm pretty sure it hasn't been. Okay, I'll just get the cover on, get the lid back down and good to go. Okay, so here's the first of the scanners that I've got. Um, this is a, a very simple one. It's a cheapo one, OBD2, and it just plugs in just down here in the footwell. Um, generally you can find the OBD2 port right next to wherever your, your bonnet release catch is. 
Um, now what I have down here at the moment is I have the other one already plugged in. So that's the Autel. And you can see the, the type of scanner it is there. And what I have is the model number and everything on the back there. So it's an AP200M. And what you do is you download the software and it basically is an app on your phone. 